You're diametrically opposed, and it all makes sense to me, and political correctness is forcing us to look at people in little boxes mm -hmm. and then say, ah, you're that, or you're mm -hmm. this. You are um, a gay evangelical. Everybody would say, that can't be done. Mm -hmm. That can't be done. Um, I have seen people, and it, it happens to everybody no matter what it is, I've seen people rip you apart on both sides mm -hmm. for both. Mm -hmm. how, how, how does that, what, 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 how does that drive you? Does that drive you at all? Does that, does that on political correctness of having to conform and mm -hmm. being what everybody says you're supposed to be, does that drive you at all? Well, it's, it's, uh, you, try, you, try to ignore, you try to ignore it to some extent, you know. You try um, not to, um, you, but you don't, you know, you don't try to, um, you don't try to put yourself into any of these um, very uncomfortable straight jackets. And, uh, you know, you don't want, um, and I think that's, you know, that's what's so uh, pernicious about all the identity politics that, uh, that um, you know, we, we all have to be, in in this category, we're all the same. I think people are all different. We're all, yeah, they, we're, you know, we're all we're all, you know. I'm somewhat idiosyncratic, but I think all of us are. All of us are idiosyncratic in different ways. And I think, I think this is a this is something that um, most people experience that they're being put into boxes way more than they're comfortable. You know, there's this interview question I always like asking people. Tell me something that's true that very few people agree with you on. And um, it's a very hard question to answer. Um, and it's, it's not because people don't have answers. They actually have lots of answers to it. It's because they're uncomfortable answering it in the context of an interview because um, you know, if, if it has to, the answer has to be something that the person asking you won't agree. And we are always nervous about doing that. We always want to fit in. And this, uh, this, this, this pressure to fit in is, uh, is, is really powerful. And it's what the problem is. We can't make progress without me pushing you with there's no i'm a recovering alcoholic and so i mean i lost everything i you know mm -hmm. recovering dirt bag and it was only at that moment where i was most uncomfortable that i said okay none of this works mm -hmm. so what am i doing that i found my way mm -hmm. you know what i mean so by 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 not making people uncomfortable mm -hmm. by by saying nobody you shouldn't be offended right. you shouldn't be right and, we're killing ourselves, right? No, it's it's, uh, it's no, the ultimate bailout. Well, it's obvious. It's ob No, we don't want. It's it, there's, it's always too easy. It's a, it's a way of being super complacent. It's to say there's nothing wrong, and that's. Uh, it's I think when it's when we're critical, when we say things need to be fixed, they need to be improved. That's that's when you have a starting point of, of solving things. It's when you say that you know everything's perfect. That's when you have to be really scared. Back on the evangelical thing. Libertarian. Mm -hmm. evangelical to I, I, I'm a Mormon and libertarian and people will right. Right. yell at me and say that can't be I think if you don't have the God principle mm -hmm. the entire self-regulation falls apart but you don't have Penn Jillette is a good friend of mine he doesn't have God he self-regulates like nobody else I've ever right. seen right so I'm, I'm totally fine with that how do we get libertarians and God people to put their swords and shields down and just say, hey, dude, I'm cool with you. You're cool with me. Let's be cool with everybody. You can all, we can all be different. Let's actually believe in diversity. Um, well, I think there are all these, there are all these uh, misconceptions. So just from a, from a Christian perspective, I think people always um, make a mistake of trying to put Christ into some sort of political Right. Uh, agenda, and I think right. that's um, if you try to do that, that's the most straightforward way to misinterpret Christianity. You know, it's um, if, if anything, Christ was extremely skeptical of politics. Um, you know, when Christ said that he was the Son of God, on on one level, this is some theological, metaphysical statement, but on another level, it's an anti-political statement because Augustus was the son of Caesar. Caesar was divinized after his death. And so um, the official son of God was Augustus Caesar. And so when Christ said that he was the son of God, he was really saying that the emperor was not the son of God in political terms. And that's why Christ got in trouble because he was, uh, he was, um, 
he, he did not believe that the political order was divinely ordained. And I think uh, one of the things that um, evangelicals and libertarians um, should agree on is that the political order is not divinely ordained. Amen. Um, uh, w w your friend Reed Hoffman, socialist. Left of center. I would, uh, he, yeah, he, I think he says he's he, he says he's socialist, but okay. yeah, he's somewhere. Right. He's, he's liberal. But he's a friend. Absolutely. Okay. I get a lot of heat from. I, I think we we have a real problem, where um, I, I think we should be with strange bedfellows. I I enjoy being with people that everybody go. Everybody says, "What the? What are you doing?" I'm I'm out of my comfort right. zone. That's what I'm doing. What you know, are I, you doing? You know, I went I went to uh, you know I went to one of these elite universities. I went to Stanford as an undergraduate, where you're always in a minority as a conservative or as a libertarian, and so I think you. But you learn a lot more about the other side at those places. Right. Um, and yourself. And yourself, and you understand your ideas a lot better. Right. And so I think uh, there is a way in which you get a fairly good education. Here's what people will say though: you can't. How can you be friends with? With people like Reagan and Tip O'Neill, they say now things are different. Like I, I can't be friends with, uh, I'm just picking somebody out of the air, a Van Jones, who will not admit that yes, I believe communism is good. So if you won't admit the things that mm -hmm. you've said in the past, and you haven't had a pivot point, well now I'm not going to hang out with you because you're just not an honest person. Right. But I could be a friend with somebody who says I am a communist. Okay, I yeah, I'm not sure I about the communists. I'm not trying to go as far as the communists. Yeah, but I mean, uh, you, but if but, they're open and honest and they're not trying to shoot you but I th I think, over it. Yeah, but I think, um, but I think it's always, um, you can always be friends with people if the politics is not totalizing. So if it's 100% politics, if that's all that exists, yes. uh, if there's nothing but politics, then, then it becomes all important and um, you can't be friends with people uh, that you uh, have disagreements about. But, uh, but friendship is, is precisely meant to be something that um, you know, exists independent of politics, transcends, or indep that. transcends you know, uh, the, the sort of political correctness that we are, we're all seeped in. Thank you so much. Thank awesome. you. Thanks for having Great. me. Great.